Around a year ago, I began working on a drone project. My intention with this was to create a reliable and stable platform onto which I could add all kinds of different computer vision and AI related hardware in order to uh, develop and practice my skills within that area. As a flight controller, I chose the Navio 2. The main reason for this at the time was because I just really liked the idea of having a flight controller and a companion computer directly integrated to together uh, in one quite neat package. Whilst I don't regret going down the path of the Navio 2 initially, looking back at it now, there are some pretty glaring issues with it, and I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't at least a little bit disappointed with how it actually performed as a flight controller. During autonomous waypoint missions, I noticed some very odd behaviour from the flight controller. For example, when flying from one waypoint to the next, rather than turning on the spot as you would expect a multi-copter to do, it would instead bank aggressively, almost like an airplane, or even start flying sideways towards the objective. Obviously. And those were the cases where I actually had some luck with the vehicle following the waypoints. Sometimes it wouldn't even start going in the right direction, it would actually start going in the complete opposite direction, and I'd have to manually take control of the vehicle for safety. Mission Planner would always give me compass errors constantly as well. The Navio 2 has two onboard compasses, though Emil had only recommended using one. But no matter which one I used, or even both, I would always get compass variances constantly. These anomalous behaviours culminated in two crashes which I strongly believe were caused by the flight controller. The second instance of a vehicle get trapped in the auto configuration. I attempted to switch modes, both on the transmitter and on the ground station, but it refused to leave it. Whilst the vehicle responded to pitch roll and yaw commands, it did not respond to any throttle commands, and it slowly started to descend. Both pulling up on the stick or falling down made no difference to the rate at which it descended, eventually causing it to reach the ground and bounce on its skids. Had I not also been travelling forwards, me poorly judging the forward speed of the vehicle, it would have probably been a bit less serious, but the clear culprit here was still something to do with either the flight controller or its uh, ability to take commands from a transmitter. Now, none of these incidents were particularly serious, and at most they resulted in damage to the props which had to be replaced. But either way, I no longer trusted the Navio to guide such an expensive and large vehicle. And these two were only the worst of multiple incidents, as mentioned before, where the vehicle had acted erratically or not followed its pre-planned autonomous route. Because of this, I essentially decided to ground the vehicle until I find a suitable replacement for the flight controller. I want something with a really high level of reliability and redundancy, and something which has a bit more documentation as well, compared to the Navio 2. For this reason, I went with the Pixhawk, specifically the Pixhawk 2 Cube Orange. When it comes to reliability and redundancy, very few flight controllers, at least within the prosumer markets, approach that of the Cube Orange. The Cube Orange is equipped with three sets of IMUs, two of which are heated and isolated. The telemetry radio also got upgraded to a RFD 868X uh, EU legal version. These telemetry radios are capable of up to one watt of power, like the VTX, and can boast ranges of, in theory, tens of kilometers with directional antennas on the ground and line of sight. The RFD radios are also multipoint capable and feature encryption as well. These are both things that you don't typically see on the cheaper 3DR clone radios that you might find on Amazon, for example. As part of this rebuild, I also finally installed an FPV system onto the quadcopter. Here I'm running a Runcam Eagle 3, which is connected to a Panda RC 1 watt VTX system. The VTX can be adjusted for power, so you can maintain legality in your local regulations. Here in the UK it's 25 milliwatts, but it does have a capability if you go to an area which has lower regulations to use one watt of transmitting power, which increases the range in theory to multiple kilometers. I also quickly designed this basic pan tilt system that uses a couple of nine gram servos. 
unfortunately, because of the national lockdown that's in place at the time of me making this, I wasn't able to take the drone out to the normal test field I would fly it at. I decided to take a calculated risk and do a test flight in my garden. I personally wouldn't recommend doing this unless you're quite confident in both your ability to fly the vehicle and the vehicle's ability to fly itself. No matter how big or small your vehicle is, you should always make sure to respect people's privacy and obviously do what you can to keep those around you safe from the vehicle itself. Especially with larger vehicles like this one, you really have to treat it like an actual car or airplane and make sure to keep it well maintained and not do something stupid with it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions about the Pixel Cube, RG Pilot, or any related systems on board the drone, comment below and I'll try my best to answer them. As always, thanks for watching and goodbye.